This is Faces and Places, and I'm Larry Berg. And we're at the Butler Area School District Administration Building, and we want to talk about how the community in Butler is supporting the educational system in Butler, particularly the Butler Area School District. With me is Dr. Ed Fink, the superintendent of schools here. And we want to talk about the Butler Golden Tornado Scholastic Foundation. And this is a foundation that was set up to help the schools do something that they couldn't do themselves. Would you tell us a little bit about how that happened, how it came about? Certainly, Larry. Uh, it's a very interesting beginning for the Golden Tornado Scholastic Foundation, and the beginning was one based on need. And really, it goes back to the fall season 1991. Uh, reporters came from Pittsburgh to cover one of our football games. They were on the track, and our student body pushed forward and actually knocked the railings over, and upon further inspection, uh, the stadium was condemned. This was in the fall. Of course, our budget was approved July 1st. We had to come up with $146,000, which we didn't have. <clears throat> Couldn't you get that from the state where there are no emergency funds, or could you borrow the money? There often is emergency funding for schools, but not for stadiums. So we were sort of in the lurch at that point of time, and out of that grew the foundation. And a number of our community leaders came together. Uh, Dr. Preserva was the superintendent at the time, uh, along with Dr. Preserva, uh, came Mike Kelly, attorney Tom King, Dwayne Cunningham, Art Bernardi, and several others, and saw the need to come up with the funding so we could put the stadium back in use and get ready for all of our spring activities, including track season, including the Special Olympics, commencement, a number of very important activities for that stadium. How much money did you have to raise? $146,000, and that was accomplished. Wasn't there something to do with some bricks to raise some money? Well, we used that for the next project, and that was Project 96, and that was for our stadium annex building. We now call it the field house. We needed additional locker room space, we needed additional weight rooms, and we also needed a place where the football team could stay on Friday night. Prior to the stadium annex, they had a troop up the, whole, the hill across two practice fields to get back to the senior high gym. That wasn't good, so we raised then, the deal with the district was, the district would provide $500,000, and the foundation would raise $300,000. And that was accomplished. And one of the things we used, we called it the Walk of Fame. And we sold bricks for $100, $120 a piece, and that went very well for us. Now, Ed, the, the Tornado Scholastic Foundation went well beyond athletic needs. I know it went into some other programs. Would you tell us about those? Yes. Uh, one that we are so particularly proud of in involved our senior high uh, gifted program and our advanced placement English class uh, with Mr. Jim Clements. And those students over a two-year period uh, came up with two books. The one Silent Heroes Among Us is the one that stands out as being the most notable, where our students went and actually interviewed World War II veterans and compiled all of this into the book called Silent Heroes Among Us, which went on to win the Valley Forge Freedom Foundation Award. Now, that was really something special. I remember the ceremony here at the high school uh, when the, a lot of the veterans came in, some in their uniforms, some wearing their caps, and what a thrill it was just to be in the presence of these people who really were the hero generation to many of us. It was a remarkable day that I will always remember, Larry, and appreciate your help uh, that day as well. But as you said, just walking into that room, there was something special there. These men went and served their country, came back expecting nothing in return, went on to raise their family, went to work, became good citizens, and that day was just remarkable. You had to be there to, to ex experience it. Now, the Golden Tornado Scholastic Foundation also has grants for teachers. Yes, from the beginning, we always tried to set aside at least $5,000. Uh, sometimes we do better than that. We'll have uh, $7,000, $8,000, and our teachers will submit ideas that are not in the budget, something they want to do with their students that is special above and beyond what we can afford as a district. And then we have a group of members of our community, our teaching staff, members of our school board, sit and evaluate those applications and we'll fund them as far as we're able to do with the funds that we have available. And now, some Dr. are just remarkable. Dr. Fink, now let's, uh, let's go to one of the schools and talk to one of the teachers about some of the funding they received for a special program in that school. 
We're at the Meridian Elementary School in the Butler Area School District with the Cindy Michelini. She's a fourth grade teacher, and she's the recipient of one of the grants from the Butler Golden Tornado Foundation. Cindy, it must have been exciting for you to be able to get the money you needed for this special program. First of all, what was the program? Well, the grant uh, included some activities that I can bring to my classes, my science classes, to let them understand uh, concepts related to solar energy and wind energy. Now, this and is a fourth grade class. Right. Are they, are they capable of understanding some of these scientific concepts? Yes. Uh, here at Butler Area School District, we have a hands-on uh, inquiry-based science program. So what that basically means is that the kids are used to learning through experiences. You bring them the materials, you, you know, they work in, in science groups, and they're analyzing, you know, they're manipulating these materials, and that's how they learn. They learn through discovery. So I think that they're already used to that process, and this just was able to expand on what they already knew about electric circuits. If you didn't have the money, would you be able to teach that subject anyway? Uh, I would have been able to teach them about solar and wind energy, but it would have never been able to be to this extent. Uh, the This opportunity was 100% backed by the foundation. Uh, the, the grant total was $1,500 for these science materials, and if it wasn't for this opportunity, then I wouldn't be able to bring that to my science students this year. Now, did you apply for $1,500 worth of materials? Yes, yes. Um, and, and the materials include what? What Just what did you need in order to enhance your program with the students? Okay, well, uh, basically the money paid for uh, 12 solar houses. And, and these solar kits came with everything needed to do um, a, a number of experiments. It came with thermometers and, and water piping. Um, it came with, a, we simulated a water heater and it had a little water pump inside, uh, the foam for the houses. It came with all the things that the kids needed. I was able to get 12, so I had one for every science group within each of my three science classes. Uh, it came with a teacher demonstration model, it came with large chart paper, uh, and it also came with wind turbines uh, that would simulate um, different types of propellers for the kids to understand. Cindy, could you have successfully taught the subject without this material? Definitely not to this extent. Uh, I mean, I could have told them about it, showed them pictures of it, showed them internet clips of solar and wind energy. But when you bring that those materials into the classroom and the kids are actually working on experiments with it, that's when the real learning takes place to the point that they're going to be able to understand it and uh, refer to it later on in their life. Sometimes as a science teacher at the elementary school level, do you get the feeling that maybe some of these kids in your class will one day reinvent the wheel? Yeah, of course. Of course I do. And, you know, they amaze me all the time with the with the conversation that we have and the discussion that we have uh, during these uh, these particular experiments. And especially after, you know, whenever we're analyzing the data and we're looking at what we learned, just some of the learning that takes place there and what they share with me uh, is pretty amazing. And I, I often think that about them. Can you tell that if maybe one or two of the students really has an interest in this where they might go as far as they possibly can in science when they get to high school and college? You know, I see, I see in, I would say in every class, I have a few kids who even will come to me and ask me, you know, where did you get these materials? I need to go and get them myself. I need to do it at my own house. Um, some of them just are so deep in their thinking that I almost think that they, you know, that they are just made for a life in science because, uh, you know, it takes all kinds and I can definitely see a lot of these kids having those strengths. So you're, you're seeing sparks of interest among children, and so you never really know how far this goes. You don't know what's going to happen five and no. ten years with these students. They may be big scientists one day. Right, right, and, and that's definitely a possibility. And if nothing else, you know, especially with this green technology, I really wanted to bring that to everyone and to try to get them to understand how important it is for us to conserve and to really take care of our earth and, and the choices that we make and just letting them know that very small things that you can do, you know, like putting a solar panel on your house, house, um, you know, that can help save energy. And if, if everyone on your street is doing it, we're talking about a lot of energy whenever you start to put it all together. Sydney, thanks for filling us in. It's exciting to hear what you're doing with young students interested in science here at the Meridian Elementary School. Thanks so much. Thank you for coming in today. And so the foundation, that is the Golden Tornado Scholastic Foundation, providing a grant to make all of this possible to interest young people in the future of this country and, of course, in science generally. Let's find out about some of the programs of the Butler Golden Tornado Scholastic Foundation. Carol Lachinsky is with us, and she is a past president of the organization. Carol, there's so much being done for this community support for the school district. I know one of the programs that's been so dramatic is the FAB program. Tell us about that. 
the Fab Showcase, it is our annual event. It happens every year, typically in April, and it is an amazing event. First of all, it showcases all of the grades throughout the district, their art efforts through a lot of um, paintings, sculptures, so many things, and it's amazing how talented our students are. Now, you have a scholarship program. I know a lot of the money goes to help youngsters go on to college. Uh, is it a lot of money? Because of the Fab Showcase, we are able to give 36 $1,000 scholarships to deserving seniors. And what basis uh, do you select the, the, the students to get those scholarships? They do have to go through an essay um, examination. We actually have them submit an essay, and then we do have criteria. We look at grade point averages, and we also look at financial need, and we actually score them, so it is a, a very fair process. Now, the Foundation is a nonprofit organization. How is the public taking to this? Because after all, their school taxes go to support the school districts. What's their attitude about having to give extra money on their own for something like this? The, the support from the community is amazing. They just um, every year continue to give more and more. In the past two years, the Fab Showcase has raised nearly $40,000 just for one event, and that truly is from the efforts of our community. These special grants for teachers, I know, are an important component in the program. Explain that some more. Yes. Um, typically, the Fab Showcase is our spring event, and the teaching grants is our fall event. And this year, we were able to provide 27 teaching grants to various programs throughout the district. Now we heard the one uh, from the Meridian School about that wonderful science project and you think about some of the other uh, grants that are, are being given to some of the school teachers? Sure there's um, a couple that I can think of off the top of my head. There's actually a program that tri trains teachers. There's one that was helped to improve the um, junior high school studio. There was a literacy program for first graders. There, there's there's the, the creativity of the teachers that apply for the grants is also amazing. Let's talk about the scholarships and the grant program. Who makes the decisions? How is the decision made? Who gets them and how much? Um, it's a group effort between some of the administration and the board members and again as we do with the scholarships we have a very fair system where we grade each one of the teaching grants and those that score the highest are the ones that are allotted the grants. How many people are involved in the Golden Tornado Scholarship Foundation? The, as far as board members, um, board members, we have probably close to 20 board members, and, and that really includes some, some teachers, some administration, but a lot of business leaders throughout the community. Does it surprise you, Carol, that the community is getting behind these efforts the way they are? Not at all. You know, when I first became involved with the board, it was probably in 2002, and I knew that it was involved in, um, as Dr. Fink had mentioned, stadium renovation, building of the annex, but it's amazing now the efforts of the foundation and the scholastic enrichment it has provided to the students. Thanks, Carol. You're welcome. The Butler Golden Tornado Scholastic Foundation, how the community supports the educational system here in Butler, particularly in the Butler Area School District. That's Faces and Places, and I'm Larry Berg.